Hello lovelies, how are you all today? I hope you're well. It's so humid today, oh my goodness. It's, it's incroyable, I'm still in French mode. It's about 25 degrees, not quite that. 23 degrees, about 74, somewhere like that. So it's not warm, it's not hot, it's warm, but it's so humid. I've been busy, well I've had a really run around morning and I was quite busy at home as on the computer and I was feeling a bit bleh, um, because I definitely have a cold or something. So I thought, you know what, pop off to the garden, do a couple of hours down there. I could see from my windows and trees that there was a bit of blow going on. I thought, oh yeah, it'll be dead refreshing. <laughs> How wrong. I've walked around the site, it's like a sauna. Now, I would have thought that was just me because I've got a cold. But I've seen two other people and everyone just both going <sighs> really humid. Anyway, that's neither here nor there really, is it? But it explains my glowage, if I have glowage. So today, um, a simple job, my grass paths. As you remember, if you remember back at the beginning of August, my stomach cold ran out and I was having a bit of a <sighs> because... It's the first time it's run out on this stimmer. I didn't know how to replace it. I didn't know it's a particular one I need to get to fit, etc., etc. because being very naughty, when I first got it, I didn't read the manual, <laughs> didn't bother, chucked it in a drawer, but at least I chucked it in a drawer so I had it for later reference. Um, I was a bit concerned and there's another part I want to pick up to show you all. Where have I put it? Oh, the shed is a mess again. Oh, where, oh, I've put it here. I've put it next to me, stupid girl. Um, yeah, the shed is just like, <laughs> I can't keep it tidy for more than two days. Yes, so I managed to get it out. And actually, it was really quite simple. So I'm hoping that putting it back in, or putting a new one in, is going to be simple. What I'll do is I'll pop outside to show you. I need a bit more space to show you so that if any of you've got it and you're all worried about doing yours hopefully i can show you with mine so whew, i'm going to strim and then i'm going to trim my edges amazingly this year hang on another glug of water it really is quite muggy in terms of strimming and trimming my paths. I normally do the first cut mm, around about the beginning of March and then my last cut towards the end of October. So November, December, January, February, I leave it alone completely. After having <laughs> after having done the initial cuts, then it depends on weather to a degree, but generally speaking, I will both strim and trim so strim the grass trim the edges about once a month if it's a warm year and we're getting lots of rain sometimes it can be as often as every two weeks because obviously the grass is growing a lot amazingly this year I was walking down just now and thinking about when was the last time I did a cut so I did that one in March and I think I've only done one cut subsequently and it was that one sort of mid-july-ish which is when the the cord um finished got used up yeah because we'd had a bit of drizzle at the beginning of july and i think it was just enough to just pipe the grass up so yeah two cuts this year unheard of and even if it's three even if there's one in there that i've forgotten about that's unheard of march april may june july august in eight months I would normally have done a minimum of eight, if not more like 16. Crazy. So anyway, um, I'm actually quite looking forward to doing it today because it's a job I always enjoy. For me, it's relaxation. So over the years, people have said to me, you know, how much time does it take? Why do you bother? So to do the all the strimming, I won't be able to do all the strimming today because the battery is a bit rubbish. I'm going to put a new battery on my uh, Christmas wish list. But yeah, so if I if I did have one battery used to do it all, it's about an 
an hour to do all the trimming and then an hour to do all the trimming. So it's a couple of hours, once a month, maybe twice a month. It's not a huge amount of time. And like I say, the point is, I actually really enjoy it. I enjoy actually doing it. Uh, and also, I enjoy how the garden looks afterwards. So for me, yes, it's well worth doing. Now, the other thing uh, I've had levelled at me over the years is that, you know, I'm, I'm too neat, I'm a neat freak, I'm obsessive and da da da. And, well, that's partly true. <laughs> I am very neat. I'm, you know, it's just how I am. But also there's very good reasons for me, especially with, say, the edges of the paths and beds. There's a good reason for me to do it. Around at soil level, so my paths, if my path level is here, at the soil level is here, where all that grass starts to grow over and overhang, it makes a brilliant hiding place for slugs and snails. And I don't want to give them anywhere to hide, proliferate, thrive, whatever it is. They've got no place in my garden. Go on, <laughs> sing your slimy hooks. So one of the reasons I trim my edges is so that there's nowhere for the slugs and snails to hide, or it's one less place. The other reason, of course, is all that material that I trim off in a normal year when it's been growing, all that material, I scoop it up and I use it as mulch. So it goes, gets scooped up from the gutters of the beds, chucked into the middle of the beds, mulch, which obviously is composting down as well. So why would I want it sticking over the edge of the paths when I can have it on the beds actually being useful. So yes, I do keep the garden neat and um, it's not, I don't, I don't prioritise the neatness, let's say that. So for example, if I'm busy with my crops, <laughs> I don't stop what I'm doing with the crops to do my paths. Of course I don't. They're the, the last on my list of priorities. Um, so I like doing it. I think I have got a good rationale for some of the reasons for doing it, like the slugs and snails and the mulch. But also once they're all done, to me it's like, it's like a, sorry, I feel a bit burpy, I don't know why. It's like having a lovely picture frame or having a very unassuming, simple, elegant picture frame in which the beds, the vegetables are the art, they're the beauty. I think having my nice neat edges sets the vegetables off beautifully. When you look at a painting, you don't want to be distracted by the frame. You want to look at the painting. And for me, my vegetables I love them, they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, they're what I want to look at. I don't want to be distracted by my scruffy edges. So, for anyone who thinks I'm too neat, well, yarboo socks to you. I'm not too neat, I'm just looking after my garden the way I see fit. So we'll go into that in a second. Now, the, the other thing to say very quickly, so I use a strimmer, battery operated strimmer, uh, for cutting the grass and then I use lifting them up I use edging shears it's a very satisfying sound to do my edges I could flip the strimmer head around to do the edges I tried it once it works but it just doesn't give as nice a neat finish as I like but also the main reason I actually prefer to use hand tools over battery operated tools or plugged in tools or petrol tools or anything like that. You know, for me, so much of the garden, it's about the, 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 sort of the whole aesthetic experience. And I like these sort of quiet, repetitive jobs where all I can hear is the shoo, shoo, shoo of the shears as they pass each other. Why do we want to make noise with power tools, you know? I would certainly never use this on a Sunday. I, I'm one of those old fashioned people. I respect and observe that Sunday is a quiet day. 
However it's changed over the years, I still think it should be a quiet day. So yes, I prefer hand tools over any other kind of powered tools. Now, um, you might think, therefore, why don't I get a push mower instead of my strimmer? So I looked at it, I, I, I've looked at them, you know the ones where you've got two little wheels and then you've got like a barrel with your, all your blades on, <laughs> backwards and forwards like my grandparents used to have. Unfortunately, my paths are too narrow. Ah, so this is a good point actually. If you're thinking of planning a new garden and you want to have grass paths, think about the width of the paths. And if you want to go without power tools, if you just want to go with hand tools, maybe you're off grid. You know, hand tools make sense for anyone who's off grid or self-sufficient because the only thing you need to do is a bit of oil once in a while, a bit of sharpening, but you're not relying on power and therefore the money to produce the power. So yeah, have a, have a look, source yourself a push mower and just make sure your paths are a little bit wider so you can actually use it. I wish I'd done that way back when. I didn't, never mind. So I use my um, cordless battery strimmer. It works really well. Uh, the, the previous cord, it lasted about a year. So that was all the path strimming, regular path strimming, plus I used it for strimming a load of the leaves, remember last autumn. So it did last quite a while. Um, actually, let me try and change this because there's something about this design I'm not that keen on, but I think I've heard of an alternative, so I'll mention that to you all. Oh, just before we go out, there's something I did not want to forget to mention. <laughs> Cat hair. Um, I, and I'm, I'm really glad Paul mentioned it the other day as well. I can't remember if it was on Planet Vegetarian or YouTube, but please, 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 when you're using a strimmer, mower, any of these kind of things, please be mindful of where there might be wildlife. So, my grass isn't very long at all, not by any means. So I can see clearly through the bits of grass there are, I can see under those edges, I can see, for example, that there are no frogs or toads hiding out in my grass. Oh, <laughs> I really have got an itchy schnozzle, sorry. Um, yeah, so if your grass is really quite long, well, you know what, by this time of year, maybe just leave it. If it's not, if it's not in the way, if it's not tripping you up, maybe just leave it now because it will form habitat for insects and frogs, toads, etc. over the winter. If you really, really, really must cut it now, go in really small sections at a time. I mean, really small sections. So you can basically run your fingers through it first to make sure there's nothing in there before you strim. Or mow because the other thing we are we're probably about a month to two months away from it just be mindful if you do have hedgehogs in your area we don't have any on our site unfortunately um, but even though we don't have any on our site I will keep a lookout because who knows maybe one of them has found us and developed us as his her territory so yeah, hedgehogs, um, I know the Hedgehog Preservation Society, often around about this time of year and again in the spring, they do uh, sort of promote this idea of being careful when we're mowing and strimming. And I've seen on their site some really, really horrible pictures where animals have been injured, saved, rescued, thank goodness, but for each one that's rescued or saved, maybe there's another one or more that is not rescued so yes be mindful and actually the same goes for because we are now getting into autumn aren't we we are well we're in autumn uh, in the UK people are probably going to start gathering rubbish as in branches and trimmings from their shrubs etc people are going to start gathering this material now for the big night every year 5th of November bonfire night 
So all over the country there'll be bonfires on the 5th of November. If you are saving material for bonfire night, oh, please, please, please be mindful. Save it in one place. Then, when it comes to bonfire night, don't light the fire there. Move it all to make a brand new fire just moments before you plan to light it. And that way, anything like a hedgehog, for instance, that's found its way in there and thought, oh, this is a nice home for winter, doesn't, what is that fly? Doesn't then, you know, get burnt to death on bonfire night. Ideally, what we should all do is we should have those piles of rubbish. I've got some behind the shed here that wildlife can make their home in and then have a separate pile specifically for bonfire night. If you're going to have a fire, you know, they're kind of going out of fashion these days, <clears throat> which isn't a bad thing. So, yes, let's whatever we do in the garden, just be mindful of the little creatures. Right. Let's see how easy it is to change this thing. Okay, I think you've got a good view from there. So, when the old one was finished, <clears throat> you see this sort of grey plastic cover. You see on the side of these, there's ever so slightly a protrusion on either side. These little lugs. Oh, the wind. That goes on and sort of clips into position. So literally all I had to do to change it was give them a squeeze to pull it out. Now, this section, there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. But the new one has come with a whole new one of these, which is so stupid and wasteful. And honestly, I don't know what I can make out of that. I don't know how I can reuse that. Doll's house table. Oof. That seems a shame. Also, the packaging of the new one. Oh, this plastic. It's so unnecessary. You know, you're not going to buy one of these by looking at it. You're going to buy it by the size number, the specific size number for your model. Well, I don't. I did not need to see this. I needed to see the number. That could have been in plain cardboard. No problem. So, the new bit, a section like this. Now, this is what I'm saying about this. All of this being such a waste to throw away. Someone mentioned to me that you can buy, you can simply buy the, the cord on a spool, buy a whole load of it on a big spool and then just wind it onto this little cassette as and when I need a new. So I think, which way up is it going to go? Rewind line. Is it going to go... So it's got these serrated teeth. I think this must be the top where the writing is. Do they catch into, there's a couple of logs here maybe. So then feed the, there's a little hole in the side. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's gonna go onto the post. Ah, there we go, I felt it. So I just gave it a little wiggle there and I could feel it click down and catch. So that's enough cord. I don't want it to be bigger than the, the sort of the shieldy bit. The new cover, honestly, what a waste. I should, I should write to the manufacturers and say, that one was perfectly good. What would be useful is if you can buy the little black cassette that was in there and this separately, so that if this is still working, usable, viable, you just buy the little black cassette. Okay, but you can see that was dead easy to do. Dead easy. Oh look, shame on me, it's filthy. Oh, <laughs> very, very dry grass. Chop that under that tree. So, I'm gonna go a strimming and the happy I shall be doing it. Um, oh, you're all down there, I'll step into the bed. 
what's odd today is I'm not I'm a bit of a freak I realize but I'm not one of those people that goes mad for the smell of fresh cut grass it's okay I just don't go mad for it but today it's lovely it really is lovely I'm really appreciating the smell because we've just not had this this summer we've not been knowing our communal parts yes fresh cut grass it's a summer smell isn't it spring and summer smell and we've not had it so to just have it for a few minutes now I could almost pretend it's summer again <laughs> it most definitely isn't I mean look at look at the colour of the foliage oh my goodness it's definitely mellow yellow nearly autumn right that's one side of one bed done I better get all these actually I'm going to just step down here again Whoopla. Um, although I'm normally quite neat at this time of year where the, the squash are rampant they're everywhere the horizontal bed phew, they're beyond the cold frame a couple of them and along this little edge here the cathedral bed they're hanging over the edges of the beds so no I'm not being particularly neat today I'm not cutting everywhere as in stimming I'm not going to do the edging everywhere because I'm just going to let those plants be they're happily romping away there are fruits on them leave them undisturbed till the middle of October when I come to harvest them so I'm not going to do that side <laughs> you're in my way <laughs> Anyone want to join in? Give me a hand. Yeah, I'm not going to do that side because there's squash everywhere. But this side, where there are very few beans, <laughs> like poor little Coco Sophie, I can do. Let's see. It doesn't take too long. Very satisfying. done that's better yeah that's a pleasing little job to do today it's so mucky it's crazy what's good as well especially with doing the hand shears at the end I'm sort of half looking at the garden at the same time also I'm watching where I'm going uh, just kind of clocking some of the jobs that need doing as mentioned the other day there's loads needs doing great something to do love it so um so yeah i'm looking forward to hopefully within the next couple of days uh, of having a whole day here so i can really really get stuck into the jobs make myself a little packed lunch maybe have a little nap in the shed if there's any space for me too <laughs> around all these little kitties oh bliss all right my lovelies just a quickie um giving you some of my rationale for being neat and uh, yeah that thing about the paths the widths of your paths the more I've thought about that going around my garden the more I've thought yeah I wish I'd thought of that before I cut my beds um, so that I could have had a push mower having said that though if the paths were wide enough for a push mower I'd probably be nicking the best part of a foot six inches either side of my beds. I'd lose that veg growing space. So it's kind of six of one and half a dozen of the other, isn't it? But yeah, if you're planning a garden and you're wanting to have grass paths, go for grass paths. Grass paths are alive. They are environment. They are sources of food for all our beautiful wild friends. Go for your grass paths, but maybe think about the width in terms of a push mower look really <laughs> can't speak really is humid all right my lovelies i'll see you again really soon i hope oh yeah let's do a tour let's do a tour of the garden at the beginning of september even though it looks like the beginning of october we'll do that next time until then bye for now